Welcome to Franklin High School in Somerset, New Jersey. Normally the home of the Warriors, but this weekend the hub of high school basketball around the country. Jack Bartek alongside Brandon Marazzo and Anthony Caffone. It's the Metro Classic 2024, one of the country's brightest events over the course of the year. And tonight we have the St. Rose Purple Roses and the Union Catholic Vikings, thank you for joining us here. NJ Hoop Recruit powered by All Abilities Live. And as we've seen St. Rose a couple times now, they have firepower. Oh, you can definitely say that they got firepower. They are led by the 97th ranked player in the nation, according to ESPN Top 100 Seniors. Of course, I'm talking about the big fella, six foot eight, Matt Hodge. I mean, he's leading this team in points, rebounds, assists, blocks, three-pointers made. He does it all, but he's not the only one. Jaden Hodge, his brother, the sophomore, coming up as a four-star recruit already, class of 2026. Fantastic ability. We saw him last week against Christian Brothers Academy. The fact of the matter is this. One of the best layup packages you will see in high school basketball. Change of body direction, mid-air, able to switch hands, great dribbling ability, def defense, fantastic. Th those two brothers on that side for the Purple Roses are a dynamic duo, and we're going to see it on display tonight. And, and on the other side, a Union Catholic team, 21-9 and nine last year, but they won 13 of their last 14 on their way to a state title, the first one since 1987 for the Vikings, and they have carried that over right into this season. Yeah, and they're led by Dr. Jim Reagan Jr., the 22nd year head coach of the Vikings, and just recently got his 300th career win back on January 24th. Experienced group, A.J. Altabelli, Yaw Ensong, this team has been together for the last couple of seasons, really meshing, really molding together. It's all coming together this season, 7-2 in the UCC Wachung, and now they're gonna come tonight trying to knock off the number one team in the state. How about starting lineups first for the Purple Roses, led by Brian Lynch in his third season. They go with the senior 6'8", Matt Hodge, the 6'3", junior Brian Ebling, the 6'6", senior Gio Panzini, the 6'5", sophomore Jaden Hodge, the 6'3", junior Evan Romano, and on the other side, Union Catholic in the black jerseys tonight, led by Jim Reagan Jr., 22nd year at the helm. They go with the 6'0", junior A.J. Altabelli, the 6'3", junior Luke Shore, the 6'4", senior Elijah Peters, the 6'8", junior F.K. Muntari, and the big seven-foot junior, Yaw Ansong, out of bounds, and it'll go to the Purple Roses in the white with the purple lettering. And you normally don't see Matt Hodge lose a jump ball, but when you got Ansong on the other side of you, he was about to go up for the alley-oop on that attempt, fellas. St. Rose comes into this one 20-1 and one on the year after a season-opening loss against the Patrick School. Jaden Hodge inside finishes the reverse lay-in, and the Purple Roses start the scoring. You're going to be seeing a lot of that tonight. Jaden Hodge getting to his spot in the low block, working around the defender, and a great back cut. St. Rose, off-ball movement, looking well early. In the lane, Altabelli had it swatted away. Great help defense. Looked like Ebling that got a hand on it. Well, Hodge to his brother up court, and they'll slow it down. We've heard about Ebling's defense for sure, especially when talking to head coach Brian Lynch. He's really proud of his development, and you see the help defense that he brings there with that block. Oh, great give and go, and that's going to be a goaltend. Good athleticism from Elijah Peters, but a beautiful pass from Ebling, and Hodge and him right in sync. Run that pick and roll game, able to go right down the right lane. And you want that as many free releases as you can if you're St. Rose tonight. This team's a really great shooting team. It's going to open up a lot of things inside. Union Catholic, really great at defending the paint with y'all in song inside. Going to be a, a really scary matchup for either team. Shore off the mark on the three ball. An early 4-0 St. Rose lead. Over a minute gone by here in the first. Hodge backing down, and the Hodge connection leads to two. I mean, there's a reason why the big fella's averaging 3.2 sis on this team. He's got the vision. He's looking for those, color, those cutters, and he can put it right on the money. Peters handles it up top for the Vikings. Still looking to light up that visitor scoreboard. Shore off the screen. Kick back, Peters, three ball, too strong. Rebound pulled down by Evan Romano. They had the space there, it was a good shot selection, especially getting that uh, opening. Romano doing it all by himself, laying it in with the left hand, and Union Catholic needs a timeout. What a start for the Purple Roses. It's Evan Romano right there going one-on-one -on -one with the big fella inside, took the contact, went up strong, good finish for Romano. We saw him against CBA, and 
all over the court. I mean, he's doing all the little things right, getting rebounds, moving without the ball, facilitating. Everybody on this St. Rose team has a similar skill set, and it works well for what head coach Brian Litch really wants to do is, is get guys out in space, space the floor out, and move the ball around. And, and, you know, that's just the experience that Lynch brings. Of course, you have the Hodge brothers, but let's not act like there's not other talent. Of course, I'm looking at Giochino Panzini, Evan Romano, Avery Lynch, and even Brian Ebley. And, and Lynch himself spending time over in Europe as a player and then as a coach. And there's so many countries he's been across, I can't even name them all. But Seven countries overseas, and... He knows about the American game, too. Started 64 games at Villanova in his career. He's a 1,000-point scorer at Christian Brothers Academy. And he has come back and in three years turned around this program. Out of the timeout, how about sure the bank is open late on a Thursday night? It's after hours for sure, but I've said it once, I'll say it again. When you got that certain kind of credit, the VIP treatment is there for you. And Panzini hit with the walk. So it goes back to Union Catholic out of the timeout. Coach Reagan's team responding. And you just got to pick your moments for sure. Eight to three right now, only a five point game, but they got to respond here on this offensive possession if you're Union Catholic for sure. The Vikings have got to keep on finding the offensive, offensive rhythm. And Song backing down, had it taken away. Panzini on the break, puts the exclamation point on it. And that's not how you're going to do it. You're going to give the young and Song 20 feet from the basket, almost by the three point line. Double team collapses on him, Panzini coming over, quick steal and fast break on the other end with a huge one-handed slam. A little extra cheese on that pizza for me, fellas. He saw the runway and he did not look back. The team shoes for the Purple Roses might just be moon shoes. Tremendous athleticism, up and down. That one out of bounds, out of the hands of Ansong. So it goes back to St. Rose with a 10-3 lead. A little interesting that they're trying to go to Ansong here right now, especially when you have a player like Hodge on him. I, I would really like to start seeing them get Altabelli going here. St. Rose, five of five from the field to start. Ebling in the lane, blocked away. Great defense from the undersized Shore. Altabelli hands it off to Shore, and he'll pull it out. They'll reset. Down low to the big fella. Can't finish, good help defense from Panzini. Gets his own miss, how about a third try? No good, but a foul. Hodge came over to block it, but Ansong will shoot two. You got four Purple Roses down there on y'all Ansong, and he's getting his rebound over every single one of them. You want to see him go up a little bit stronger in that situation. You know, he has the height advantage inside. You got to go up that right hand strong and finish at the basket a couple of times there. Just a little too short with the shot. First free throw good for Ansong. Elijah Peters checking back in. FK Montari heads to the bench. Also into the game for the first time for the Vikings, Terrence Wood, the 6'5 senior. One thing Coach Reagan said about Ansong, he has a smooth free throw stroke. Left that one short, but for a guy his size, he can shoot it. Absolutely. And you want a guy who can stretch the floor now, especially in today's basketball landscape. And now Ansong is trying to develop that jumper. And the fact that he can get to that point is going to look really good for college coaches who are looking to sign him. Seven foot with a jumper is very valuable nowadays. Jaden Hodge going right to the bucket, draws the contact. He'll shoot two. And how about the young brother for sure? I, I mean, the second leading scorer, uh, multiple D1 offers, averaging 12 and a half points right now. He's only a sophomore, but he's first in steals on the team as well with 1.7. Has played all 21 games in the starting lineup. Uh, alongside Big Bro and Co. Uh, and he can literally take over the game if you let him as well. Yeah, I mean, we saw against CBA last week his ability. You saw that St. Rose was trying to collapse at the half court line and pressure and get those easy steals in the backcourt and leading the easy fast break points on the other end. There was Jaden Hodge really at the forefront of that on the defensive attack as you see it right now in that half court track. He's got seven to lead all scorers in the early goings. Almost halfway through this first quarter. Alta Belli on the dance floor, gives it up. Peters going to the bucket. Picks it up, Shore working baseline, he walked. Just a little bit too much pressure, that's what happens. You walk into the rose patch and you get caught in the thorns. You gotta pick up your feet a little bit because you just can't handle the pressure. They've done it to multiple teams, that's why they're on a 20 game win streak. And fellas, imagine being on a 20 game win streak. The Hodge, Hodge, pick and pop. Matt for three off the back iron. Rebound pulled down by Wood. Up top, Peters. Pull up, long two, got it. 
Smooth stroke from Peters. Yeah, really solid jump shot from Peters. Had very bulky up top too, was able to drive inside and use that little indecision there to keep the defense at bay and pulls up from 20 feet out. Hodge on the floater, short. Peters gets the long board. Taking it to the rack, contact. No foul, but a bucket for Elijah Peters. Impressive start for the senior. And that is an absolute great start for Peters. I, I mean, nice finish down low. Three ball on the other end for Romano and a big answer for the Purple Roses. And that's just what happens here. We're going to be going back and forth. This is the kind of game that the Metro Classics bring into you. That was a 5-1 run for the Vikings before the three ball from Romano. And that's one thing about St. Rose. They can take a punch and answer right back. And they were out to an 8-0 run to start this game off. Union Catholic with a couple of nice possessions back and forth. But then St. Rose able to spread things out in three ball game. Romano knocking one down. Sure, good handle. Right hand spinning it off the glass and in. A little shifty move there, giving up a little bit of size and framework. But he had the quick step on him and puts a perfect English on that ball. Coach Reagan told me today, everybody thinks he's a three-point specialist as Matt Hodge draws the foul there. And Song blocked it away, but two shots coming up for Hodge. He said everybody thinks that Luke Shore is a three-point specialist only. There is so much more to his game, and he's put that on display early on. For sure, but you cannot knock the threes for sure. I, I mean, lead, uh, he has uh, the most threes on the team, leading the team for sure, but he is a sniper, but that's not the only part of the game. And he can play defense, really good at facilitating, can play the point guard spot when A.J. Altabelli isn't taking the ball up. This team has so many guys that can ball handle and create for themselves. Hodge knocks that one down, 15 to 10 lead for St. Rose here, two and a half to play in the first quarter. We're having some scoreboard issues, so we'll keep you posted on the score throughout the game. Right now, 15 to 10, St. Rose in front. Peters off the screen, had it blocked. Good defense from Panzini, but an offensive board. Step out, three ball, good! FK Montari from deep, and Coach Lynch wants to talk things over. Uh, that's what it's all about. The original play collapses down. You gotta keep active, stay alive. They find the open shot, and the big fella, FK Montari, is lurking on the wing, and he knocks it home. And right just like that, we're at a two point game, baby. That's how you beat the St. Rose defense. They're always trying to spread out, they slide well. You don't want to drive inside and, and force Matt Hodge to reject your shot. Keep everything outside, work the ball around, and you saw uh, Montari wide open on the left wing. Good kick out, easy shot to make. And I think the most important thing for me too, and don't get me wrong, it's not like Union Catholic doesn't have size. They certainly have height. It's just that bulkiness that you are seeing. St. Rose uh, has spent a lot of time in the gym, in the weight rooms specifically, I'm sure, uh, because quite honestly, half that team looks like they could be competing for Mr. Olympia. And, and I think one interesting thing about St. Rose, when I talked to Coach Lynch earlier in the season, he said, when it comes to the of basketball, not to sound arrogant, but everything was being done the wrong way, or, or different at least than how we were doing it overseas. And he took the St. Rose team, got some talent in and taught them to play basketball the right way. Instead of individual drills, it was team drills, and you can see that in their play style. And what does Luka Doncic always say? It's a way easier score in the NBA than it is overseas. It's testament. They play that solid team basketball, solid team defense, and it's much harder overseas. Well, you know what it is? It's everybody wants to go ISO. Everybody wants to chuck up the three, or, or they're trying to get to the paint. It's all about getting that momentum and that movement as a team, as, as you're seeing on display right now by the Roses. Oh, Hodge. Looks like Peters got tripped up inside. Matt Hodge with the left hand finishes and he comes up hobbling. Oh, oh man, that does not look too good, but what a finish from him in traffic, taking a little bit of contact and getting a little scoop layup there, uh, having to go extra low, to make sure it doesn't get blocked. Have to hope the Villanova commit is okay. He's making his way around, lumbering a bit defensively inside. Wood backing down, blocked by Panzini. He has been putting on a defensive display early on. Yeah, and I gotta say, right now with St. Rose, Hodge coming off the court, changing up the defense a lot. It's some two on two on that last possession. They had half court trap earlier. They go the three two. We saw it a lot earlier in this year. They could switch defenses on a dime and really give this offense a lot of different looks, making it more difficult for them to see where they come down each time down the court. Peters, the fall away is good. Tough look from Elijah Peters. Nice job by the senior leading right now. 
Panzini trying to answer and he does. Every time Panzini or someone has the answer on the other end, and that's gotta be a little demoralizing as this game goes on. Inside, Altabelli lost it, loose ball, Wood picks it up. Euro stepping inside, he's fouled, and it looks like he'll shoot too. And look at Wood, I mean, an athletic forward, able to hop, moves well, lateral quickness. He's a guy that a lot of schools are starting to look at and really narrow their eyes in on. I mean, coming off the bench today, I, that's just gonna tell you how much deep this Union Catholic team is. When you have a guy like Wood who can come in off the bench and make an impact, gives you a whole nother dimension. First free throw off the mark. Second sub of the game coming in for St. Rose. Tyler Cameron, the sophomore, entered for Hodge as he gets checked out. And now it's the freshman Avery Lynch, so the youth movement coming in for St. Rose. Lynch, the, early for St. Rose. Yep, the nephew the of Brian Lynch. Cameron gave it up. Hodge resets it. Under a minute to play here in the first. Beautiful backdoor feed, and Panzini lays it in. And that's just beautiful. Montari the other way, no good, but a foul. He went down hard, a little slow to get up. Good hustle from Panzini, but two free throws coming up from Montari. Going back to that offensive play, though, how, how do you like that? Your main guy goes down, no problem. Your other starters picking up where they left off, and it's a nice backdoor cut and a perfect bounce pass right on the target. And they ran that play a few times early with Jaden Hodge. That's how he got his first two baskets of the game. They're finding that back cut right down the middle of the lane, wide open when they try to cheat that left side, and then here's the foul on the other end. Dangerous play there by Panzini. Second free throw for Montari rattles out. 45 seconds to play in the first. And you know, it's high school ball. Uh, we've seen free throw troubles all year long. You gotta make them earn it at the line. And smart move. Hodge to the bucket, elevated. Couldn't finish, but he's fouled. And he'll head to the free throw line, upset with himself, not finishing it, but he's got two free throws coming up. And, and I'll tell you right now, the Hodge brothers, they almost remind me of just, I, I don't know if I want to say more stronger, maybe more athletic, the Lonzo and LaMelo ball type for me, where of course the, the older one, Matt, just a little more polished, a little more aggressive, but it might be Jaden that has the talent for sure. I, I mean, he's just something special. I see Matt on the bench still favoring that left leg. I don't know if we'll see him again in this first half. Hopefully he'll can get a chance to come back in this one. Second free throw off the mark for Jaden. 30 seconds to go here in the first. Six point St. Rose advantage. Altabelli looks like he wants to run this one down and take the last shot. Eggbling coming out to greet him at the half court line. Altabelli waving off the screens. Looks like he wants the isolation. Now gives it up, down to nine seconds left in the first. Backdoor pass inside. Peters blocked away by Panzini. He's been everywhere defensively. Beating him up there, Panzini, apex point. That's a A-plus defensive play from Panzini. Going straight for the ball, straight up and down. Not trying to do a hero ball. Great defensive play from Panzini inside. Down to three point six to play. Altabelli to trigger in. Some trouble, find Shore blocked again by Panzini, his fourth of the quarter. I'll tell you right now, fellas, like a hot.
Yeah. 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 Back here on All Abilities Live, Jack Bartek, Brandon Marazzo, Anthony Cafone. We, appreci we appreciate you sticking with us through some technical difficulties. Kick out Panzini in the lane, dishing to Hodge and finishing over the big man. And nice to see that Matt Hodge back on the court, but Giochino Panzini has had full control of this. It's like he's holding a hot cup of cappuccino and he decides when the lid comes on and off. That's the thing with the St. Rose team. It's anybody on any given night. Usually it's Matt Hodge. Jaden took over last week, now Panzini tonight. Altabelli with a beautiful move, but he can't knock down the jumper inside. Second chance, no good. Matt Hodge back out there for the Purple Roses. He grabs the board. Panzini in transition, no good. Offensive rebound, and St. Rose will reset. Hodge has room. Gets the roll. And how about that one? Even if he missed it, you saw baby brother, not so little though, flying in there looking for the offensive board. Altabelli feeding down low, and Montari was not expecting it. St. Rose gets it back. And I appreciate the effort there from Altabelli. You see him just penetrating the defense, was trying to lay it off, but just a little bit miscommunication. Hard to see through those big white jerseys. So good start here to the second quarter for St. Rose. They lead it now by 10. Over a minute gone by in the second quarter. Hodge driving kick, Ebling from the corner, short. Fight for the board, out of bounds. It'll stay with St. Rose. Good battle underneath there to win that possession back. And again, it's Ebling out in the corner. Jaden Hodge driving inside. They're getting their shooters out in the wings, in the corners, and with all these options. Oh, beautiful feed from Ebling, and Panzini has an easy two. Union Catholic needs a timeout. I mean, I'll tell you right now, I know we got some scouts in the building, of course. Mount Verde was playing on this court right before, but... Giochini Panzini has been putting on a display right now of just not even technically sound basketball, which it has been, but how about high intelligence, finding the ultimate shots, shot selections, hitting some dimes, four blocks in the first quarter. He's amazing. Smart basketball and also athletic basketball. A couple of key blocks and closed out in that three-pointer for the block earlier and then had that big block inside on Montari when he went up. This, this guy is not only smart, but extremely athletic. Panzini is gonna be a special one. Yeah, and, and listen, for the Vikings, Coach Reagan said, the big men are the difference for him. They, they are special players, and it's what takes them from maybe a top 20 team to a top five team. But so far tonight, it's been St. Rose dominant on the inside. It's just they're too strong down low. That's the difference. You have the height for sure, but no disrespect to the Vikings. Their bigs just a little bit skinnier, not enough mass on them because normally they're the big fellas dominating down low. They get the looks that they want, and the big fellas have soft touches. They can shoot too, but, I, I mean, when you're going against the St. Rose team, I mean, it, it's just packed full of muscle right now, and, and it's no longer amongst the trees. It's amongst the redwoods. Six and a half minutes to play in the first half. A 7-0 run to start the second quarter for St. Rose, and we'll see how Union Catholic can respond out of the timeout. They're greeted by a zone look from the Purple Roses. Inside Montari. Oh, what a finish. How about that athleticism? Quick 1-2-3 passing Montari inside, and a great find by Peters on the corner pass. Backdoor feed, Cameron, no good. Ball tapped around. Altabelli comes away with it. Altabelli getting to the bucket, beautiful touch. And that's it, you gotta keep the momentum as it's going. You saw Altabelli almost lose the ball for a second, jumps right into a teammate's hand. They get it right back to their starting point guard and he kisses it off the glass, great effort. On the other end, that one's short, rebounded by Peters and he draws the foul. The senior, Elijah Peters, has been very impressive for Union Catholic in this one. Uh, like a slingshot off the bench for me. I mean, high energy play ha has put away a couple of mid-rangers too and, and getting work done on the board. He's got six points to go along with three rebounds. Five and a half to play in the first half. 
Peters working baseline with a step, driving kick in the corner. No good on the three is sure. Hodge with the board. Outlet pass up ahead. Kick out Panzini. Ball fake. Three ball. Too strong. Shore with a strong rebound. It's a track meet now. Inside and song. The biggest Euro step of all time. And he finishes off glass. As a defender, you can't defend that because you're already in your spot that you were planning on him taking that shot at. And a huge full stride gets him away from that. Easy shot on the left block. Oh, in the lane. How about the adjustment from Evan Romano? Evan Romano down though. I, I mean, you see the body adjustment, the control. I, I don't even know how he got that shot off. On the other end, oh, almost a putback slam for Ansong, but it was above the cylinder. And so St. Rose gets it back. That'll be the sixth turnover for Union Catholic so far. Jaden Hodge running the offense, lobbing it down low to Matt Hodge. Good ball movement, three ball for Romano, no good, but another offensive rebound. Cameron on the second chance, left it short. And Luke Shore will settle it over to Altabelli. Catching a lucky break, you won't see St. Rose miss too many on, on three offensive rebounds on that possession. Altabelli with the left hand, quick step, had it blocked, but he's fouled first. Two free throws coming up for A.J. Altabelli, and he's the guy that makes it go. Coach Reagan said he's the catalyst, the quarterback out there on the floor, and what a season he has had. Oh, absolutely. As we said, leading the way, I mean, he's just been something spectacular. I mean, top leading score, 12.7 points, assists right under eight, and leading in steals. Played in all of their 17 games, leading the way for yeah. them. He's been Near a double-double on the year. Fantastic first time you saw on that play. Fantastic. He gets to that, that quick step, gets the dribble down, and able to get to the basket. And he's so crafty when he gets to the rim, creating his own shot. John Acosta back in for Union Catholic. Alta Belly good at the line. Cuts it back down to a six-point game. Halfway through the second. A nice answer here for Union Catholic. Alta Belly has some Division I interest as a junior. Hodge and Hodge working. In the screen game, that one thrown away. A lot of contact, no foul, and the Vikings get it back. Elijah Peters there on the defensive end, getting right in Jaden Hodge's face, and it's not easy to rattle Jaden Hodge, but when you got Elijah Peters inside six foot four in your face, you got to rush that pass a little bit and throw it out of bounds. Up top, handling is Acosta, gives it up off the screen. Peters going to the rack. Kick out, Montari with room. Off the back iron, Ebling has the long board. Crossover in the lane, going up with the left, had it blocked, but he's fouled. And man, St. Rose has just been getting into the paint at will. I think right now, if you're Union Catholic, there, there's no real way you could defend St. Rose. You want to go into 3 2 and defend the perimeter? All right, we'll run that back cut inside with Jaden Hodge or Romano and get that easy basket inside. You want to defend the paint now? We'll, we'll let, open it up, space it out, and get to Jaden Hodge or Matt Hodge and hit a three. I mean, there's no real way that you can stop this Purple Rose team because they're so smart. They know how to find the open basket and work through any type of zone defense. And don't forget about Panzini lurking out there as well. I, I mean, they got shooters down in St. Rose. First free throw is good for Ebling. Union Catholic has done a better job defensively in the second quarter. St. Rose 9 of 12 from the field in the first. Just 4 of 11 here in the second as Ebling's good on a pair. But for me, it's been the offense adjustment. You're allowing Altabelli to go to work. The him penetrating has opened up a lot of this offense right now. And it's been that zone look. Great defense. Hodge jumped it. And the lob on the other end, no good. Follow from Lynch won't go. Good hustle back on the defensive end, and Ansong draws the reach in on the board. I think for Union Catholic, you're kind of handcuffing yourself there on that motion offense by the half court line. You're, you're giving yourself no real space to work in the half court trap, doing its job as Jaden Hodge running all the way up to create havoc. And uh, ironic too, as I was just saying, that, that switch to the zone has given them a little bit more different looks, but that, that half court trap run perfectly. Kick ball there. Union Catholic has gone scoreless over the last two minutes. In fact, we haven't had any score in over two minutes. Deadlocked here. I'm oh, sorry, any, any field goal. We had the free throws 
on the other end, but no field goal in the last two minutes. 33 to 25, St. Rose lead. Alta Belly looking down low in the post. He'll reset it up top. Wood at the free throw line. Backing in on Panzini. Turnaround, hook shot, yes, with the left. Uh, how about that? You, you see him back down Panzini and then come right back the other way with the other direction shot. Puts up a nice hook shot on him. Panzini thought about a deep one. Instead, he'll settle it. Matt Hodge directing traffic. Now it's Jaden Hodge off the screen. Great defense from Montari. Hodge getting into the lane and finishing with the left hand. Splitting the double team, going to the left side hand with contact. I mean, that's a, a really tough play for a sophomore to make. And Jaden Hodge, again, showing why he's a four star. Wood working in the post. No good, but a foul. Second possession in a row for Wood working in the back down game. And it's looked pretty good down there. Having some success with it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Keep on going until they figure out how to stop it. But going back with the four-star Hodge, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets up to a five-star. He keeps making layups like that. I mean, Terrence Wood, again, I, I really want to say he's starting to really develop in front of our very eyes. And As a senior coming off the bench, the fact that he's in this game, in this moment, at the Metros, one of the biggest events in all of high school basketball and playing up to the standards and keeping this Union Catholic team with St. Rose you got to be impressed. Wood comes up empty at the line. So the lead remains at eight for St. Rose. Just under two minutes to go here in half number one. Jack Bartek, Brandon Marazzo, Anthony Cafone. It's NJ Hoop recruit powered by All Abilities Live. St. Rose on top so far. Hodge, a deep three. Yes! Matt Hodge, limitless range. Villanova, do you see that? Matt Hodge, top of the key, about five feet outside the three-point line, almost a college three, knocking it down. Impressive from Hodge. And, and closeout defender was no problem for him, neither. The four-star, one of the top 100 players in the country, as you said, committed to Villanova, and he certainly has a bright future ahead of him. Yeah, and I think he's... You talk about the Villanova connections with the St. Rose team. Brian Lynch, of course, playing at Villanova. And now Matt Hodge going to Villanova next season. They got a really special talent right here. And the fact is he's continuing to develop his game. And he's, I don't think he's ever content with the, where he's at in his development. He's always looking to strive, always looking to improve another part of his game. And a, a very mature young man. So that bumps it up to a nine-point nine game. One minute to play. Here in the first half, Hodge, a deep one again. That one too strong, the heat check. Long rebound, Montari up ahead to Peters. Oh, it was a meeting at the top floor. Blocked by Hodge. The second chance was rebounded by Shore, and he'll shoot two. That might be the most explosive miss of the night. Fellas, it looked like we just had a, a, a co crash course collision up there. I, I mean, I want no part of the business that's being played in the air right now. Shades of 96 Jordan at MSG going right down the lane and missing the dunk, but if there's ever a dunk to miss, is that one when you got Hodge trailing. Ebling checks out for St. Rose. Free throw is good for sure, so they have it down to seven under a minute to play in the second quarter. Hypothetically, they could hold for the last shot here. Cameron guarded tightly by Altabelli and a whistle away from the ball. Looks like they'll get Montari holding Panzini. And we saw the Montverde game before. They had a shot clock in that one, but now with the two NJ schools playing in New Jersey, back to New Jersey high school rules. And I wonder if this whole weekend we're going to see some, uh, some shot clocks. Well, St. Rose will get the Montverde team that you just mentioned, number one team in the nation on Saturday night. We'll have that for you here. And Jay Hooper Crew, powered by All Abilities Live. 30 seconds to play in the first half. Hodge over to Lynch, right back. This time lines up the three and knocks down another one. That's just too much space for me, fellas. He's shown all year he can make it. You got to get someone out on him. 
He's got 12, it's a 10 point lead. Altabelli trying to answer, great adjustment, but no good. Hodge has the board and slows it down. Oh, taken away by Altabelli. Five seconds to play in the half. Altabelli's pass deflected out of bounds and Union Catholic will retain it with two seconds to play. Fantastic hands from AJ Altabelli. The fact that he stripped it and caught it in one motion just goes to show you how great he is on the defensive end all season long. 2.7 steals per game coming in this one. He's the inbounder, gets it to Wood for three, no good. It might have been tipped by Panzini, and how about that? His fifth block of the first half everywhere defensively. It was a group effort for St. Rose in the first half, and at that first quarter, just about as efficient as you could be, and overall, they come away with a 10-point lead going to the locker room. And I think it was the combination of Panzini, Jaden Hodge, Matt Hodge, the big three, as we like to call them, all doing what they usually do, playing their game, playing their styles, the motion offense working well. They've been getting those back cuts when they work with that 3-2 zone on the outside. The three-pointers have been falling in the latter half of that second quarter as Matt Hodge starting to get going, and that's dangerous if you're Union Catholic. And on the other side for Union Catholic, I mean, with as good as St. Rose played in that first half, and you know the profile, they've become a nationally ranked team. They're the number one team in the state of New Jersey, and you held them to a 10-point game in that first half. Could have been closer. Yeah, absolutely, and I actually liked what we saw from the uh, second quarter. Uh, looking back real quick, just that reverse is absolutely insane. That's the level of talent that you're facing, though, right now. But, hey, there are no slouches of their own, but it's that penetration that's been coming in. And how about this? The, the, the aggressiveness is where I want to take it right now. As you see a couple uh, uh, on these. Panzini blocking outside. But it's extra well. efforts for sure getting in, but there, it's a lot of contact that they're facing, that's the problem with it. And, and you know, they've had success with plays just like that. You gotta be able to bang down low. You gotta be able to keep that physicality up and stay aggressive. The problem is The is block party for Panzini. It's just been unreal. Five and half number one. And then even if it looks like it's off target, it ends up bouncing right in. And I, I'm telling you right now for sure, uh, you gotta just be a little more aggressive for me, fellas. And I liked Altabelli directed traffic, penetrating in there. Let him go to work. For Union Catholic in the second half, what are the keys if you're Coach Reagan in the locker room? I think on the defensive end in particular, you need A.J. Altabelli to, to probably guard Jaden Hodge. I know he's given up a lot of height, but he's got to be the guy that pokes that ball free. Maybe you implement that half-court trap that St. Rose has been doing because that's been causing a lot of havoc for them. Get on that fast break, push the pace. When they get out in front, that's when they're getting the majority of their points. They need to push the pace, they need fast break points, they need to run the floor. And for St. Rose, you have to imagine a lot of the same. Uh, you gotta keep it exactly to where what you're seeing. What could possibly be going wrong if you're St. Rose? Nothing, three point shots, cutters, offensive rebounds, they have it all right now. This is why they're the number one ranked team in the state of New Jersey. And there's another reason why they're gonna be facing the number one team in the country on Saturday. Can't wait. Jack Bartek, Brandon Morazzo, Anthony Caffone here at Franklin High School. It's the Metro Classic here on All Abilities Live. NJ Hoop Recruit, we're here. We'll be here tomorrow and Saturday as well. After one half, St. Rose 41, Union Catholic 31. We'll be back for second half action in just a minute. Jack Bartek, Brandon Marazzo, Anthony Caffone back here at Franklin High School. The 2024 Metro Classic. And fellas, a good one here after one half. St. Rose 41, Union Catholic 31. You're watching NJ Hoop Recruit powered by All Abilities Live. St. Rose has not been tested much this year. Looks like they might be in for a dogfight in half number two. Well, absolutely, for sure. I mean, only a 10-point lead for them. What a showing from them, though. you got to be very happy if you are head coach Brian Lynch. But you know they're never satisfied. They're on a 20-win win streak for a reason. Only losing that first game against, uh, I believe it was the Patrick School, game number one. I, I, fellas, I'm going to be honest with you. I've never been on a 20-win anything in my life. 
So in that huddle, you know it's nothing but business. Yeah, and I think they've come out in that second quarter. They played a lot of, the first first quarter they got in the 8-0 run, and then since then it's been a little bit back and forth. I think Union Catholic really got the game flow down. They just need to go on an extended run. The same groups that started on both sides, Panzini, the Hodges, Romano, and Ebling out there for St. Rose. On the other side, Peters, Altabelli, Shore, Montari, and Ansong. Union Catholic has it to start the third. Trying to get it down low to Ansong. They do, can't finish, but he's fouled. He had the positioning on Jaden Hodge, and I'm not sure if Hodge impacted that shot. Looked like he did. I think they're going to get that one on Jaden Hodge inside yeah. with the body. Looked like, yeah, I think Matt got a piece of that one going up. But the contact inside, and it's, it's really tough to defend a guy on the interior like y'all, Anson. When you got that height, you got the ability to go up strong and generate contact. He's going to get a foul most of the time he goes up. And one thing Coach Reagan said about the junior, he said when he first came here last year, he was still a project, but... He embraced his game, and he embraced the work that he needed to do to fine-tune it. And he has really turned into a special player. He said he's a very cerebral kid. He thinks the game well, and he has a bright future ahead of himself. Absolutely. He's a dog. <laughs> I think you've seen it throughout these last couple of years within his progression. He's started to get more comfortable playing the game, more comfortable playing within this system. And he's only going to get better from here. Another year under his belt next year and more time for him to develop. And you might be seeing him playing some Division I basketball in a few years. Ebbling off the mark on a deep one out of bounds. So Union Catholic going to get a chance to cut even deeper into an eight-point deficit. Trying to start out this second half strong. Ansong has it out around the volleyball line. Now gives it up. Montari catch and shoot. Off the mark, long rebound, Ebling gathers, up ahead to Panzini, going to the bucket, reverse is good. And how about that one, a little bit all around the world, as Panzini getting real deep on that penetration and scooping right back on the reverse, just great transition ball. And Song up top, he pulls the three ball, can't knock it down. Hodge with the board, good looking form from the seven footer and Song. Hodge on the other end, no good. Both teams a bit cold out of the dressing rooms. Peters gives it up to Shore. Pull up, blocked by Romano. Jaden Hodge landing strip, floater, no good. A lot of misses to start the second half between the two squads. And these are misses that normally a lot of these, both these teams make. High quality looks, Matt Hodge missing a corner three, Jaden Hodge missing a floater. And Song missing a couple of shots inside. These are shots that these guys don't miss, and out of the gate's a little cold. Altabelli has the Ansong screen. Kick back to Shore. Union Catholic taking it slow here, working it down to the big man. Ansong, backdoor, Altabelli, beautiful feed, but it bounces out. Just getting robbed on that one. It was a beautiful find. Just hitting off the rim. Hodge with space, too strong. Altabelli over to Montari. He pulls a contested one off the front rim and out. Fight for the rebound, and they'll get Ebling on the foul. And that's going to be his third. I want to go back to that last possession for Union Catholic when Altabelli off the back cut. Got the ball, sensed the defender behind him, and changed layup lanes, going to the left hand around it, the, the rim. The fact that he sensed the defender and able to change his body midair, it's so impressive. Beautiful defense from Jaden Hodge, reading the pass, intercepting and laying it home on the other end. And there you see the perfect finish. That's the reason why this kid is something special and leading the team in steals. Active hands, and, and the defense doesn't even know he's there because he's able to just shift into great positioning. Altabelli gets free and has the answer. Like butter. Up top, A.J. Altabelli finding a spot off the screen in perfect form, knocking down the three. The three-year starter, what a job he's done for this program. Helped lead him to a state title last year. That three ball is too strong, and he has the board. Does a little bit of everything for the Vikings. Trying to pull him back into this one. They trail it by nine. Altabelli off the screen. 
Has to give it up. Wood working baseline. Had positioning, but he walked. He disagrees. But the Purple Roses get it back. It was interesting because the foot, while it did stay in the same position on the court, it did come up. So I think they're saying on the contact, because that foot came up, it wasn't allowed to a bit. But uh, taking some serious contact down low, almost hitting into a brick wall. Hodge trying to get it down low. Whistle up top. They're going to say, I believe that Wood got Hodge up top in the head area. And Wood's got to calm down. After that traffic, he was a little heated, came back on the defensive end, and was really pushing Matt Hodge up top, letting that frustration take, let, let it lead its way to the other end of the floor. Got to have a quick, a, a, a quick memory and let it go. Romano gets some space off left. Offensive rebound from Panzini. Romano to a cutting Hodge. Give it away. Ansong with the good hands intercepts. Almost taken away by Jaden Hodge. Now Ansong in some trouble, able to get it up to Peters. Peters going to the bucket. Backdoor feed. Sure, blocked away. Believe it was Panzini again. Altabelli over to Shore. Good movement from the Vikings, and Shore draws the whistle on Hodge. How about Panzini, though? Six blocks in this game. Oh, oh it's it's not even a block party. The entire city is partying down the block right now. And, and the fact that Union Cat is able to regroup so easily after that Panzini block, get it back up top to AJ Atabelli. The fact that they were all down low, were able to space out really quick and draw the foul. Good job by Union Catholic to, to stay reset. Panzini's on triple-double watch here. 11 points on five of seven. He's got five rebounds and six blocks. What a performance from Panzini. Alta Belli, beautiful floater. Soft touching in and a timeout. That cuts it down. Believe to seven. They haven't updated the scoreboard here in the arena. It's going to be a seven-point ball game with three and a half minutes to play, and Union Catholic sticking around. And I, we've been hearing so much about this sensational point guard from Union Catholic, AJ Altabelli, and today, I, I gotta say, I'm really impressed. The, the movement, the quickness, the first step, the dribbling bag that he has, the floater, the good touch inside. Off-ball movement, he does everything you want out of a point guard. It's the decision-making for me, right? It's not only being able to make the shot, it's putting himself in those positions, able to put that arc on the ball, knowing I'm giving up the height, but I'm not giving up the speed, that's for sure. A quick step as fast as almost anybody on this court right now, if not the fastest, and he's just making the right decision after right decision. I'm loving what I'm seeing. Jim yeah. Vegas, hey, he's the quarterback for a reason, right? It, it seems like he's always in control out there. And... Obviously not the tallest guy, especially on the court tonight. But he plays bigger than he is. And he puts himself in the positions in those quick hands. You almost can't even see the hand moving. It. It's happening so fast. Hodge gives it up to Ebling, getting free off the screen. Short, all to belly, another rebound. He's got four boards on the night. Altabelli weaving in and out, now gives it up inside Montari. Contact, no good, but a foul. And FK Montari is going to head to the free throw line. And look at Union Catholic starting to get some momentum here. A couple of baskets, defensive stops, and now out of the timeout. Nice pass from Altabelli down low to draw the foul on Montari. You can't be afraid to run into the Rose Hedge for sure. And in that time, uh, drawing the foul, a nice job. You gotta go full steam ahead with these guys and, and let them know you're not fearing it for a second. And if they can make it, uh, if they can get some momentum uh, to continue with the physical game, they could be in a decent position here as they cut into this lead. Second one on the way from Montari, left it short, fight for the board. Ends up in the hands of Hodge and the Purple Roses dodge a bullet there. Three minutes to play in the third. Poked away, Peters takes it on the break, going to the rim, no good, but a foul, and that's gonna be a block against Ebling. That's his fourth, and Elijah Peters has two shots coming up. And Ebling now, one more foul to give. And quickly, Tyler Cameron, the sophomore, comes to the table. It's a fair guess who's he, who he's gonna be checking in for. And I love the thought from Ebling, I'll never tell a guy to shy away from taking a charge but you have to know with three fouls how important you are to your team maybe uh do a little ole there yeah i he, i think he was surprised too that he got caught on it um 
I think maybe just a little bit of foot movement because you saw him when he came up. He, he looked like Casper, like he just saw Casper the Ghost. He was like, whoa, he was so surprised. Uh, but nonetheless, here it is. That's one of your best defensive guards, and Jaden Hodgman has been running that trap really well today in that first half. Now with him off the floor, Union Catholic gets a lot more things opened up. It's down to a four-point game. Alta Belli picking up full court. Great defense on Romano. Union Catholic fans getting into it. Hodge to the rim. No good, but a foul. It looked like he was ready to explode out of the gym, but he'll take the two free throws. Fellas, I get up out of my chair for that one. It's a highlight real possibility every time he goes into the paint that strong. And that was looking like it was going to be one for the Graham. Uh, timeout, St. Rose. Coach Lynch wants to discuss things. A 30-second timeout. They have led wire to wire, but it feels like the momentum is on the side of the Vikings right now. 8-0 run these last five minutes out of this break, and I think there's only been, I don't think St. Rose has scored a point in the second half. Maybe one basket? They've got the, those two field goals early on, but they've been held in check over the last couple minutes. Yeah, it's, it's been an extended drought here for St. Rose, and this is not a situation that Brian Lynch sees often with this team, usually scoring over 70, 80 points a game in those matchups that they've been playing down the Shore Conference. Union Catholic coming out with some new energy here in the Metro Classic. Well, with 22 years, if there's anybody that's gonna stage a, a comeback, it's head coach Dr. Jim Reagan Jr. for sure. Matt Hodge at the free throw line. The 6'8 senior knocks down the first, and the story of him and Jaden and their dad, Odell, has been well documented. Odell and Coach Lynch go way back, and when Odell found out that Lynch was coaching over in the States, he said, when were you going to tell me? He sent the boys over there. He said there's no one he trusted more with their development, and I'd say... That turned out pretty good for both sides as Hodge finishes with the left hand. Man, I've been saying that he's New Jersey basketball's version of Blake Griffin. That's a physical play, great control, and just bodies defenders out of his way. No need for the dunk when you can lay it up with that power. Peters trying to answer too strong. Good defense from Hodge. Shore cutting baseline. No good, but he'll shoot two. Union Catholic making the case for basket interference and... They might have a point. It looked like a hand went through the bottom of the basket. Coach Reagan is stating that right now. They're not going to get the call, though. Shore will shoot two. Matt Hodge up to 15 on five of seven from the field. Yeah, that's been Matt Hodge's specialty, being efficient. And I, I love Matt Hodge's game because he doesn't force anything. And, and the tendency with high school players, especially at this level, is to, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shot chuck as much as I can. I'll shoot 25 shots. I'll finish with 35, and that'll be it. But, no, he takes the shots that, he's, that the defense gives him, and that's why co college coaches rave over his talent. That one taken away by Peters. Good hands. He's been really good for the Vikings so far. Steps into a three, now gives it up. A good thought from Peters. Almost had that one blocked and able to... Corral it back in and pass it away. Alta Belli now slows it down. Down to a five point game. Alta Belli, quick step in the left hand, high off glass and in. Wow. What a launch angle on that one. His ability to compensate for height, the angles that he's attacking on. I mean, he's doing quantum physics right now. He's got 11. It's a one possession game. Panzini can't answer, and it's rebounded by Shore. A chance to tie. For the first time since 0-0 for Union Catholic, Alta Belli giving it up to Montari, who left it short. And Montari couldn't come out down with that one. It was that little half turn that got the defense uh, caught off guard for a second. And he put the pass right where it needed to be, just a little mistiming coming down. Oh, a minute to play in the third. Hodge lost it, but a whistle. And I believe... That's going to send Matt Hodge to the line. As Elijah Peters was in there trying to strip that ball away. I think he got ball, but... No, not in the bonus just yet. So it's going to be a baseline out of bounds for St. Rose. Maybe that arm came across and an arm barred a little bit. Enough to warrant the call. Jaden Hodge working up top. Panzini, pump fake. 
Gives it up, 40 seconds to play in the third. And a whistle against Montari as he stepped in front of Hodge, but just uh, a second too late. Was trying to cut off that path for sure. But as you said, just a, a split second behind a lot of contact, especially with two physical bodies like that. That's going to be a foul every time. Hodge off the inbound, down to 30 seconds to play in the third. Panzini. Back to Hodge near the logo. Hodge driving left, has a step whirling dervish. No good, a whistle and a walk. Wow, I thought they were going to get the foul inside against Montari because there's a little bit of contact there on the backside and he got flown forward. But they're going to get the travel afterwards. I don't think Lynch is happy about that one. Down to 20 seconds to play in the third quarter. Still a three-point St. Rose lead. But Union Catholic in striking distance for the first time in a while. Altabelli has it down to 10. He's going to take the last one. Now gives it up to Shore. Shore cutting across the lane. Contact and a walk. Maybe a makeup call for the other end. For those of you who thought it was a foul against Hodge. And so St. Rose gets it back with 2.4 2 to play. Jaden Hodge across half court. He's got a look. No good. He didn't get it off in time anyway. So that takes us to the end of the third quarter. And what a run to end that third for Union Catholic. They have it down to a three-point game. And they held the highest potent offense in the entire state of New Jersey to seven points in the third quarter. I mean, that is a master class in halftime adjustments by Jim Reagan Jr. Fantastic. The last field goal for St. Rose came at the 2.30 mark of that third quarter. They've been scoreless since. And man, Union Catholic, they got themselves in a dogfight. And I, I bet you if you told Coach Reagan that you know, around seven o'clock today, he'd have this in a three-point game heading to the fourth, he would have taken that. Uh, absolutely, as we look back here on the highlights, just great adjustments by St. Rose, but I'll tell you, when, talk about great adjustments, look at the open shot, wide open three, lining up, taking your time with it, absolutely beautiful, coming into the lane, no problem, little floater, doesn't even need the glass, kisses that one, rimming around, and, and then back on the other side, the big fella, trying to answer with his own, and they've been going to that ISO, look at getting him some open shots, but here's the maestro right here, Alta Belli. I mean, oh. I don't even understand how you would decide to get the ball like that. I can't even make a regular layup. This kid's hitting here, hitting it off the top of the glass. And you saw a lot of number two in black in that highlight. A.J. Alta Belli has been the engine for this team in the comeback effort. Fantastic. When the lights are shining bright, it's one of the best teams in New Jersey. A.J. Alta Belli is showing up. I think the one thing that Union Catholic's done a really good job today is get a lot of St. Rose players in foul trouble. Four for Romano, four for Ebeling, and it's creating them a lot of chances against the second unit. Nice job by Lynch to save it. He's in some trouble, and Coach Lynch has to take a timeout just 15 seconds into the fourth quarter. Union Catholic has the energy right now. Uh, absolutely. I mean, forcing them to burn timeouts right at the beginning, I mean 15 seconds into here to uh, quarter number four. You know uh, Coach Lynch did not want to use that one but had to bail his guy out for sure. That's what I'm talking about. Bumping up aggression, knowing your look, staying composed but still bringing that power and putting the pressure on the other team. I mean when you come in, no disrespect to Union Catholic but uh, I mean the number one team on the opposing side, you got the underdogs, you got nothing to lose, you come out, you get after it. And I don't know what was said at halftime, but the adjustments have been spectacular. I think the, everyone's moving at the ball in the offensive end, it's creating so much motion. St. Rose trying to you know, make up for those two guys in foul trouble in Ebeling and Romano off the floor with their bench unit. And Union Catholic's picking them apart right now. At great halftime adjustments. Hodge gets it in the low post out of the timeout. The Purple Roses could really use a bucket. Jaden Hodge with space. Yes! Just what the doctor ordered for St. Rose. Hodge to Hodge. Brother to brother knows exactly where he's going to be. Posting up a little bit. Didn't see what he liked. Saw the opening and slings it over. And the trust that they have in one another. Something special. That one poked away by Hodge. On the break. Lays it off the front rim. But he gets his own miss and puts it back. 
That's Jane Hodge for you. Lone defender up, getting the steal. Fast break at the other end. Great finish at the other end. Alta Belly hounded, kicks it out. And that one poked away by Matt Hodge, able to save it. Taking it himself, poked away by Peters. Great hustle back on the break. Shore in some trouble. Ball on the floor, out of bounds, back to Union Catholic. I think Union Catholic poked the beast a little bit. <laughs> St. Rose came out a little lackadaisical in that third quarter, and the, the lead got cut to five, and since that point now in the fourth quarter, they're mad. <laughs> and I'll tell you right now, you gotta give it to the effort with two defenders getting back there in front of Hodge. That's not a place I wanna find myself. Uh, we always root for the, the highlights and the best possible play. I almost wish the defenders weren't there just so you could see the big fella go into the air. Since that season opening loss to the Patrick School, St. Rose has not had a game come within 10 points. Final score. It was a three point game coming into the fourth. They have it back up to eight. Alta Belly too strong on the three. A little bit too much pressure there on the outside. Rush the shot, not likely of him. That one poked away. Peters running the break. Would have been a three on one, but a great take foul. I believe they got it on Cameron, and that'll stop the break, but Union Catholic keeps it. In the NBA, that'd be free throws. Transition take foul, new rule being implemented, but in high school, you do that all you want. Great job by St. Rose to stop that break before it even broke out. How about the steal to get it going? Off the belly, off the double screen. Sure. Nice defense from Panzini. Off the belly, directing traffic. Trying to get it down low to Montari. Can't get it over the arms of Hodge. That time just miscalculated there. You saw he was looking, but I mean, 6 8 and, and quite the wingspan. Down low. Lynch had it rattle out. Rebound bounces out to Peters, and that's a tough foul for Lynch to take. 70 feet from the basket. So trailing by eight, Union Catholic has the ball. Lynch to the bench, and Ebeling back for the first time since about halfway through that third quarter with those four fouls. The Vikings have five minutes and 45 seconds to come back against New Jersey's number one team. Shore, off the screen. Alta Belly down low to Wood, backing against Ebling. Hodge got a piece of it. I thought they had a case for a goaltend there, and Hodge lost the jump ball, so Union Catholic will keep it. I thought that should have been two points. Yeah, I thought that ball was just going down off the, the apex point before, after it was touched, so maybe a case there for a goaltend. Wood, backing in, now works it back up top to Shore. Ever since that quick start to the fourth, St. Rose has turned the clamps on. A 5-0 run over the last four minutes inside, no good but a foul. Surrounded by white and purple there, but still calm and composed. You see Altabelli trying to get that floater going a little bit, too much power on it, takes some contact down there, but the ref gonna send him to the charity stripe. First free throw off the back rim. Altabelli, a sure-handed free throw shooter, but he can't get that one to go. Evan Romano back in, the junior takes the place of Tyler Cameron. And that free throw is good. So not over yet with five minutes to play. Inside, Hodge feeding Romano. Great hesitation, and he finishes. That's just good patient there, waiting for the shot to open up. He saw the defender coming in for the block, but it, it just taking that extra second, composing yourself, and able to fade away a little bit. Good decision. The lead back to nine, and Song had it ripped away. Panzini over to Romano. Across the lane, draws the foul. So with the lead back up to nine, four and a half minutes to play, you could feel the tides turning in the favor of the Purple Roses. Yeah, I think St. Rose got punched in the mouth in the third quarter, and that's something that they are not used to this season. Union Catholic came out strong, but woke up the beast. Hodge, the dagger! Could it be? 
Talk about waking up the beast with well, the dragon just came out of the cave right there. And once again, too much space for him. A couple feet behind that three-point line. He's able to knock it down, no problem. 12-point game. It's tied for the largest lead of the night for St. Rose. Up top, Peters gets free, gets the bounce. Big answer. And, great, and a timeout, Union Catholic. Great rotation from Peters to come back up top. Saw the double team collapsing. Got back out to the three-point line and a great feed. An easy three-pointer that knocks down. That's a huge shot for Union Catholic. The Vikings desperately needed that. Peters, the transfer from J.P. Stevens, averaged 21-6 and six last year. Had to miss the first six games of the year, but just scored his 1,000th point last week, so... Looking to finish his high school career strong. He's got some Division three interests. He's got 11 points tonight and seems like a guy that any college coach would be happy to have. No, absolutely. I mean, especially the defense for me. You can talk about the score, and he's hit some great mid-rangers, but his defensive prowess, the steals that he comes up with, getting them into the fast-break situations, I mean, a great senior presence. And I'll tell you right now, 11.8 uh, points, averaging in only 10 games this season. I would have loved to seen a full season had he not sat out. That Plainfield game was so full of milestones for this uh, Union Catholic team. It was 1,000 points for Elijah Peters and also 300 career wins uh, for head coach Jim Reagan Jr. So, I mean, a lot of milestones hit that game. It's doctor to you, sir. The doctor. For Same. Union Catholic, though, for that to be their first field goal of the fourth quarter just about halfway through, I think it says more about that St. Rose defense, but certainly not what you were hoping for after that strong finish to the third. Yeah, I think Jaden Hodge has been the difference maker right now on the defensive end for the Purple Roses. He's been that lone defender up top and active hands and getting into that dribbling spot and getting easy takeaways for this defense. Oh no, Romano throws it away. And just like that, with four minutes to play, it's a nine-point game, and Union Catholic has the basketball. Well, no, for sure. And, and you know, you got to close out this game with four minutes to go here. you got to just tighten it up just a little bit. They put themselves in a solid position, but anything could happen here in Whoa. high school ball. Altabelli showing off the full bag, but poked off his leg. Great hands from Hodge, and St. Rose gets it back, fellas. I'll make the point. 15 seconds into the fourth quarter, Union Catholic came out with a burst of energy after a strong close to the third. Coach Lynch calls a timeout. Some people might have thought he was crazy, and they have been a total different team since then. That one swatted away by Wood. Peters down the lane, spinning, no. Rebound tracked down by Ebling. Just a little bit too much rotation on that layup down low. It was a nice adjustment. Oh, and that should have been a backcourt violation. Hodge didn't get his feet down. Oh, wow. You have to establish in the front court, and I think the Purple Roses got away with the one there. And backdoor, Jaden Hodge makes it sting. It's back up to 11. Float, floating it up just like a wide receiver catching that fade route on that one. Great link up between the brothers once more. Wood trying to get it up top. Out of the reach of Peters. Just under three minutes to go now. And St. Rose has put their stamp on it. And you talked about the 10 point mark for sure of all year long since that, that loss they've been getting it. And right now, uh, they've achieved that mark. We'll see how high they get it. And Jack, I want to go back to your point where you said it was really crazy for Lynch to call that timeout after the first basket by Union Catholic coming out of the fourth quarter. Oh, tough finish from Evan Romano. Going right at the big man. But this, his, a coach knows his team. He knows what he needs at certain points in the game. And after giving him a basket to start the fourth quarter, that's just an, a, a timeout to reset and get things going again for this team. Altabelli takes a tough fall on the baseline. Yeah, it seems like Brian Lynch has pushed every right button in his first three years here. Well, listen, I don't know what, what he's been saying, especially uh, all season long. I'm sure, he, you know, fantastic coach. But I, I'd like to assume... You know, in that huddle, it's like, hey, think about the schedule that we've been playing all year long, and think about the competition we got coming up on Saturday. You guys know who you are. It's time to close this one out. Turnaround for Ansong rattles off. Strong rebound from Ebling. Hodge will slow it across for St. Rose. Hodge, step, floater, yes, and the foul. 
He can score it at all three levels. That's NBA-esque NBA for me, fellas. I mean, a seven-footer on you, you make that body adjustment and is able to float it over him right on the money and draw on the and one. I mean, it's just perfect. With the left hand, nonetheless. I mean, he's a right-handed shooter going in the lane, going up strong, and that is maturity at its finest. A guy who could do it anywhere on the basketball floor. Matt Hodge with 21, Jaden Hodge with 20. The Hodge brothers dominating here at the Metro Classic. Alta Belly with some beautiful English off the glass. And we're gonna see Jelly Fam at some point this weekend, but that was Jelly-esque there from Alta Belly, weaving his way through the defense, double clutch layup. Under two minutes to play. Hodge trying to get it down low to Jaden. He does. Great patience and finishing with the right hand. Just good vision, you, you know, putting others in positions to succeed. That's what Matt Hodge does. But Jaden Hodge doing what he does there. He intercepts that one. Matt Hodge easing it across with 120 to go. Jaden in the lane, left that one short. Up to a 16 point St. Rose lead. Peters believe Hodge might have gotten a piece of that one. Panzini on the break, out of bounds. Stays with St. Rose, but man, a dominant fourth quarter for the Purple Roses. 19 to six in the final frame. Way to flip the script. After being outscored 14 to seven in the third quarter, St. Rose didn't allow that third quarter really to find them for the rest of the second half. Had numerous guys in foul trouble, Ebeling, Panzini, and Romano all with four. That didn't change how they played the, at the end of this game. Great closeout, Matt Hodge, a couple of big shots. Jaden Hodge, a couple of big steals in the defensive end. And that's a winning formula for Brian Lynch. And, you know, that's just kind of what's been happening to teams all year long. I mean, you, you want to get physical. You want to keep penetrating in the defense and, and, and pick up the pace with it. But next thing you know, you're deep in that thorn patch. You're looking around. You're surrounded by purple roses. And you don't even know how you got there in the first place. You're looking left and right. It's a purple rose making a play, making a highlight, making the extra pass or the steal. And you were just lost in the field. And listen, it's a great effort for Union Catholic. They played them tough, but in that fourth quarter, just overpowering. And that's what St. Rose really brings to the forefront. When they're getting knocked off their feet, there's always, especially with some of the best teams, even when you get knocked down, you get punched in the mouth, what's your mentality? Are you gonna shy away from the, the competition or are you gonna come back stronger and really close out this game. And St. Rose showing why they're the number one team in the state, closing this one out in the fourth quarter. Final minute of play. It's a 16 point St. Rose lead. Romano putting the moves on, feeding, and two more for Jaden Hodge. He's up to 24, 11 of 19 from the field. Super efficient out of the Hodge brothers. Just something special, man. And it must feel so great to be able to do that, share that court, and have this kind of performance against this kind of competition. But the season only gets harder from here, fellas. Lobbing up top, Panzini puts it down. Puts the exclamation point on this win. This was a five-point game entering the fourth quarter, up to 20 now. Sure, a deep three off the mark. St. Rose flexing their muscles in the fourth, and they take this one home. Their first game of two at the Metro Classic, and how about that for a primer as they look ahead to the number one team in the country on Saturday night. Well, I'll tell you right now, it's almost poetic justice that it ends up being Panzini on the last nail. He was the one with that high energy, that defense, the block party that started in, the, in the first blocks. and ends up with six. I mean, just absolutely electric. But the Hodge brothers stepping up, doing their thing. This is a legit unit. And listen, that is no disrespect to Union Catholic. The Vikings came in here and they gave them a run for their money for sure. As you look back, on it though it's just a three-point barrage that was coming and just making extra passes here Matt Hodge great find inside and way to stick with the play by Romano double clutching and waiting for his composure to be set and left there on the platter back up top the big fella too much space cash money baby yeah Matt Hodge was magnificent that fourth quarter and then passing it back up top going to his bag cross inside a block by Anselm 
Just luring him into position. Speaking of luring into position, a little floater over the top, and the brothers link up once more. And then, boom, laying it on the platter and taking the contact, no problem. They run that motion offense better than anybody in the state. Hodge again, cross the left hand, inside floater with the right hand, got the foul, and flexed a little bit. You earned it tonight, Matt Hodge. NBAS for sure, and there you see uh, little brother there, what a nice little baby hook, but coming through the lane and dumping it off again, just fine after fine in this one. I mean, this team played well, and then Panzini with the exclamation point, the finisher to knock off Union Catholic tonight by 20. Yeah, and I don't think you could have asked for much more, especially in the first three quarters, if you're Coach Reagan and Union Catholic. It's a three-point game going to the fourth, and St. Rose just did what they do. I, I, that's the difference between uh, a great New Jersey team and a great national team. And you can't hang your head if you're Jim Reagan right now. You went toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the best teams in the state, best teams in the country for three quarters. A.J. Altabelli, hats off to him. He played magnificent in that third quarter. Had a lot of floaters in the lane with some contact, hit a three as well. He's going to be fantastic. It still has another year to go on yeah. his belt. He's going to be a special one for this Union Catholic team. Already such a great career as a Viking and only more of a story for to sure. write, only a junior. So excited to see what he can do in his final year and a half here. They still got a strong season to finish out and a couple big games coming up down the stretch. On the other side for St. Rose, obviously the Hodges are the headliners and they lived up to the bill tonight. I mean, listen, it almost seems like every time we've seen them, it's so hard to do, but yet Matt and Jaden Hodge always living up to the bill billing. I mean, this weekend alone, I, I know Matt at 90s, rank 97th right now. I, I don't know when those new rankings come out, but I, I, if he plays his card rights and has a showing like that, I can see him moving up. And you want to speak about moving up, how about four-star younger brother Jaden? I mean, you see the full display. Little things to work on, sure, but, I mean, only a sophomore. He's absolutely electric. I cannot wait to see what comes for the Hodge brothers, but it starts with Saturday night, baby. Yeah, the Hodges combined for 45 points on 18 of 28 from the field. Uh, a perfect game to showcase their talents, and they'll get another chance, as Matt said, Saturday night against Montverde. Man, you're not going to want to miss that one. We'll have it here. NJ Hooper Crew, powered by All Abilities Live. Day one here at the 2024 Metro Classic is done. A couple of great games, and we'll be back tomorrow. First, at 3.30, St. Thomas Moore from Connecticut taking on Blair Academy, and then we'll close out the day with a great uh, southern New Jersey game, Manisquan taking on Roselle Catholic, the public versus the private. Going to be two good games tomorrow here. NJ Hooper Crew, powered by All Abilities Live. For Brandon Marazzo, Anthony Caffone, all of us here at NJ Hooper Crew and All Abilities Live, I'm Jack Bartek. Have a great rest of your night, and we'll see you tomorrow afternoon.